Holly went to the supermarket to buy a watermelon. She found these four watermelons, but only Uh one of them is edible. Can you guess which one? The first watermelon is a hologram. See those flashing pixels? The tail of the second watermelon is a green snake. Probably not the safest choice. And the fourth watermelon has little cracks. So Holly should choose the third watermelon. One dark, cold night, Harry and Pam were chilling together in their country house. Harry was watching a movie while his wife Pam enjoyed her favorite mystery book. Suddenly, all electricity went out. Harry decided to go to bed, but Pam decided to finish the book. There was no artificial light around, but this fact didn't stop Pam. How is that possible? Pam was listening to an audiobook on her phone. It's big on Saturday and Sunday. It's small on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's absent on Monday and Friday. What are we talking about? It's the letter S. Bella and Ken took a flight to Europe to celebrate their honeymoon. It took them two and a half hours to reach the destination. After spending two weeks together, they flew back home. However, it took 150 minutes this time, even though the plane flew at the same speed. Can you guess why? Turns out that two and a half hours are exactly 150 minutes. Karen went camping in a jungle with her three best friends. They had a wonderful dinner and went to sleep. In the morning, Karen woke up first and found out that someone had eaten all the food from the bag. She questioned her friends. Josh said, I was very tired and fell asleep as soon as my head touched the pillow. I don't know what happened. Leah said, I left the tent in the middle of the night to go to the toilet. The food was in the bag near the tree where we left it. Wendy said, I left the tent at night and spent some time stargazing. I ate just one chocolate, I swear! Who ate the food? It was the monkey who was hiding in the tree. See those footprints around the bag? They are definitely not human. Gerald is a college dean. Somebody stole his car this morning. Soon, the police found it across the street. The thief hit a pole and escaped. The police interviewed three suspects. Holly said, I was busy having classes all morning. Then I went for a walk with my friends. Brian said, I was checking the test papers. Rob said, I skipped classes and spent the day at my girlfriend's studio. Can you guess who stole the car? It was Holly. Take a closer look inside the car. She lost one of her earrings. The combined age of Jenny and Jasmine is 49 years old. Jenny is twice as old as Jasmine was when Jenny was as old as Jasmine is now. How old are the sisters? Jenny is 28. And Jasmine is 21. Lisa likes grapes, but not potatoes. She likes squash, but not lettuce. Also, she likes peas, but not onions. Following the same rule, will she like pumpkins or apples? Pumpkins. Because Lisa only prefers things that grow on vines. Which of the following words don't belong to this group and why? Courts. All the other words are anagrams of each other. Two people participated in a contest. They had to hold something. Finally, the jury announced the winner. 
It was a person with their hands and feet tied. How can this be possible? It's all simple. The contestants had to hold their breath, and the tied person managed to hold it the longest. Becky is thinking about a seven-letter word that we read very often. Letters 5, 6, and 7 grow every year. Letters 3 and 4 are the same. Letters 3, 2, and 5 cover over 70% of the world. What word is Becky thinking of? The correct answer is message. Our age grows every year, and the C covers over 70% of the planet. Amy is looking at Nick, and Nick is looking at Mia. Amy is married, and Mia is not. Is a married person looking at the unmarried person? Will you go with a yes or a no? Or is this information insufficient? The correct answer is yes. Two combinations are possible here. If Nick is married, Mia, who is unmarried, is looking at him, who is married. If Nick is unmarried, we still have Amy, who is married. In this case, she's looking at Nick, who is single, which meets the requirements too. Five friends were eating apples. Amy finished before Bob, but after Cat. Dan finished before Eve, but after Bob. Can you figure out the exact order in which they finished the apples? Cat, Amy, Bob, Dan, and Eve. Eric's job is to guard a supermarket parking lot. One day, he was walking around the area as usual and noticed that someone had parked the car in the middle of the driveway. He questioned four women. Ladies, who is the owner of this car? All four women replied, it's not my car. Eric took a closer look at the vehicle and figured out its owner right away. Can you guess which of these women is the owner of the car? It's the first lady. She's the only person who's not wearing a bag. Her bag is in the car. Peter came home in the evening and found his car wrecked. His three roommates were there. Peter decided to find out who was guilty, so he questioned them. Josh replied, I didn't touch your car, I was walking the dog. Mike said, that wasn't me, I was playing football with my friend. And Will said, "Mm, nothing special happened today, I was just hanging out with our neighbors. Can you spot the liar? It's Will. He said he'd visited the neighbors, but nobody lives in this abandoned house. Plus, his cheek looks like he was in a crash. Sophie was sleeping. Suddenly, a robber broke into her apartment. He locked Sophie in the bathroom and asked her to stay quiet. Then, the robber began to collect cash and jewelry around the apartment. Suddenly, the phone started ringing. The robber told Sophie to pick up and talk without giving away the situation. Sophie picked up the phone. It was her husband. She said, Oh, hi, darling. Is it an emergency, darling? Give me a call when you land. I'll cook your favorite meal that will help you relax after your business trip. Then she hung up. Ten minutes later, the police arrived at Sophie's house and caught the robber. Can you guess how the police learned about the robbery? Sophie played with the mute buttons. She pressed mute on specific parts of her conversation to make her husband only hear emergency, call, and help. And he called the police right away. Rick woke up in a weird basement and saw three doors. He has only one chance to escape. If he enters one of the doors, he won't be able to use them again. The first door leads to a room with high-voltage wires hanging above the wet floor. Behind the second door, there's a room filled with water and piranhas swimming in it. 
The third door leads to a space where flesh-melting acid rain is falling from the ceiling. Which door is more or less safe to enter? Rick should choose the first door. He'll be okay if he won't let his body come in contact with the wires and the wet floor at the same time. Jerry called his wife Robin and told her that he would be home by 7 o'clock. They didn't plan anything special for that evening, but when he arrived at 2 minutes past 7, Robin was furious. Why was she so angry? Any ideas? She thought her husband would come home after work by 7 p.m., but he appeared by 7.02 a.m. the next morning. When the day after tomorrow is yesterday, today will be as far from Wednesday as today was from Wednesday when the day before yesterday was tomorrow. What is the day after this day? Can you guess? It's Thursday. Harry and Barry are two magicians performing this evening in two nightclubs on the same street. But one of them is fake. Can you guess who? It's Barry. Take a closer look under the magician's tuxedo. On the right, you can see a restaurant employee badge with his name on it. He must be a waiter who came instead of the real magician. A monkey, a squirrel, and a bird are racing to the top of a coconut tree. Who will get the banana first, the monkey, the squirrel, or the bird? None of them, because bananas don't grow on coconut trees. Bonnie is cooking dinner. She has three stoves, a gas stove, a wood stove, and a coal stove. But only one match. What should she light first of all? The match! You are a bus driver. Nine people get on the bus, and three people get on. Then, two more people get on, and another one gets off. Finally, four more people get on, and two get off again. How old is the bus driver? Whatever your age is, remember the question? You're the driver. You suddenly wake up trapped in a dark room. Your only source of light is a candle. There are two doors in front of you. Behind one of them, there's a tunnel that will lead you outside to freedom. Behind the other, just a cold brick wall. You have a key that will open only one of the doors, and you can try it just once. So how do you know which door to try? Hold the candle up to each keyhole. The flame will move near the door that leads outside. You escape to freedom. But you need to send some important documents to your friend Beth. You can't mail them in a regular package because the precious papers will get stolen. So you put them in a box and lock it. But Beth doesn't have the key to this lock. How can you send the papers if you can't send the key to the lock separately? First, send the lock box to Beth. She'll attach her own lock and send the box back to you. Then, remove your own lock and send the package again. Beth can then remove her lock and finally open the package. Bad news! You get a call one morning from Beth. She says the crucial documents were stolen from her office. They'd been on the desk the evening before, but are nowhere to be found this morning. You immediately go there to question the employees. In no time, you gather three suspects. Sean said he had been at the movies last night. Michael had taken his girlfriend to an amusement park. 
and Christina was at a prestigious art gallery. Who's lying? Sean. His movie ticket isn't torn. Having been caught red-handed, Sean makes a break for it. He hops in his car and drives away. Law enforcement are on the lookout. Sean sees a police car right ahead of him and starts driving toward it. Why would he do that? He was on a bridge. He needed to go toward the patrol car to get to the other side and make his escape. No such luck for poor Sean. He gets caught and locked up. But he starts hearing rumors of an inmate planning to break out. The guards have two suspects. First, a quiet bookworm who spends most of his days with his nose buried in sci-fi novels. The second, a big burly tattooed guy who's always working out. Who should Sean become friends with if he wants to get out of here? The bookworm. Look closer, and you'll see his bookmark is actually a file. On Friday afternoon, the owner of that same prestigious art gallery discovered that four of the most famous artist's self-portraits had been stolen during an exhibition. The police show up to do an investigation, and now they have three suspects. Sarah, the artist, said she disappeared into one of the studios to paint. John, the security guard, explained he was just waiting outside and had no idea the portraits were gone. Daniel, the caterer, stated he was at a nearby store picking up extra napkins when the robbery took place. So who's the thief? It's the security guard. He couldn't have known the stolen paintings were portraits if he was standing outside. As fate would have it, there was another incident that night. Michael, who never really liked what passed for art in modern times, rushed into the gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the gallery's owner thanked him for his actions. How come? Michael is a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more works. They awarded Michael a big check in gratitude. He heads home just in time to get his five kids all packed up for a camping trip that weekend. Mike and his wife are really looking forward to having the weekend for themselves to relax. But when they woke up on Saturday, they discovered the check was missing from their safe. Once the officers showed up, they interviewed the three people who were in the house that morning. The chef said he was in the kitchen getting school lunches packed. The cleaner said he finished cleaning quickly that day and left early. The butler had just gotten back after taking the kids to camp three hours away. Who's lying? It's the chef. It's Saturday, so there's no school, and the kids have gone camping. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a scientist is working on something bizarre. He invites Kevin and Claire as blind test subjects for his new serum invention. He gives them each a glass of ice-cold lemonade. Kevin drinks his fast, but Claire apprehensively waits to see the side effects on him first. After two hours, nothing happens. So she drinks her glass. Two minutes later, her skin turns green. If both the drinks had the serum, why was only Claire affected? The serum was in the ice. Since Kevin drank his fast, none of it got in the lemonade. Claire runs out of the lab in horror. She gets in her car and speeds off. As she's driving down a long, empty road, one of her tires pops off. Good thing she has a spare in the trunk. But here's the problem. She now has no lug nuts to put the spare on with. 
So what should Claire do? Unscrew one lug nut from each of the other three wheels and use them to attach the spare tire. It'll be enough to get to the nearest garage safely. As Claire is putting on her spare tire, the scientist catches up to her. He hands her four pills and tells her it's a complex cure to the green face serum. Two of the pills are an antidote, and the other two are a catalyst that activates it. Claire must take one of each type together. If she takes two of the same, her face will stay green forever. Just as the scientist is handing her the pills, he trips and they get all mixed up. They look identical. What should Claire do? Grind the tablets up, mix all the powder together, and divide it in two parts. Each half will have the same amount of catalyst and antidote. It worked! And just in time! Whew. The next day, Claire has a big calculus exam. But funny enough, all the students in the class refuse to take it. Professor Miller can expel only one student for skipping the test. All of them know each other's names. If a student knows they'll be expelled, they agree to take the test. How can the professor make all the students take it? She should tell them she'll expel the student whose name comes first alphabetically. Then this person won't skip the test. The next person on the list won't skip either, and so on until the end of the list. Professor Miller grabs her cup of coffee, takes a sip, goes to set it down, and what's this? It's stuck to her hand! Somebody put glue on the cup, and she's got three suspects. Look carefully to find out which student is playing tricks on the professor. Sure, the first student has an awfully guilt-ridden look on his face. And the second student's smile looks just like pride for a job well done. But look closer at the third student's pocket. Yep, it's the tip of a glue bottle. Professor Miller is so annoyed by her class's shenanigans, she decides to change her career. Wow. She opens a shoe factory. She's so successful that she builds a second one in another city. But despite her success, the problems don't end. Her employees keep secretly taking shoes from the plant. What can she do to resolve the issue? Have one of her factories start making only left shoes and the other only right ones. One of those shoe swipers is driving a semi-truck full of shoes to sell for a profit. He comes to a tunnel, and there's a major problem. His truck is just an inch too tall. But he can still drive through the tunnel. How? Let some of the air out of the tires. It'll lower the truck just enough. When the shoe swiper gets through the tunnel, he comes to a fork in the road. One goes to the town, the other to never-ending wilderness. There are guides standing at each. The catch? One always tells the truth, the other always lies. The driver doesn't know who's who, and he's only allowed one question. What should he ask to find out which road goes to town? Ask either one of the guides which road the other would say is the right way. Then he must choose the opposite. The truth teller knows the other will lie, so they'll point the driver toward the road to nowhere. If he asks the liar, they'll know the other guard would honestly point him toward the town, so they'll again recommend the road to nowhere. The shoe thief takes the road to town, but he has another puzzle to answer before he's allowed to enter. The guard at the gate asks him one simple question. What's the logic in the order of the following words? 
fun, blue, be, more, and dive. Every word rhymes with its number on the list. Fun 1, blue 2, B3, and so on. The shoe swiper finally settles down in this new town. Too bad for him, he can only use a payphone to make calls. One day, the phone breaks. He informs the phone company, but they do nothing. He tries again the next day. Same result. The third time, he finally gets them to come out and fix the phone. So, what did he say? He claimed that people were making calls without paying. Lucy and her best friends, Lily, Joy, and Rhonda, were having a pajama party. They decided to watch a movie in the living room. Lucy went to the kitchen to get some snacks. When she returned, she saw that Lily was lying on the floor unconscious. Rhonda said, I was on the phone talking to my boyfriend. Suddenly, Joy hit Lily with a pillow, and she fell down. I don't know why. Joy said, Rhonda's lying. She hit Lily with a pillow very hard, on purpose. Who's lying? Both of them. There are no pillows in this room. After the movie, the girls decided to play with a Ouija board. They called the ghost of a famous singer. Suddenly, the pointer on the board started moving by itself and wrote this. Evil Lots Yad 3 Eva Hoy. Can you help Lucy and her friends decode this message? It says, you have three days to live. The girls freaked out and interrupted the session. Lily offered everyone to take some pictures. They took many cute photos, but when they scrolled through the gallery, they freaked out even more. Why? All four friends are in this picture. But then, who took it? Lucy told her friends it was time to get some sleep. But as soon as they entered the room, they ran out screaming. Why? Look at the mirror. It reflects a creepy shadow waving at them. Eventually, Lucy offered her friends to sleep in her parents' bedroom. And she opted for the couch in the living room. The TV was on, and it calmed her down. In the middle of the night, she heard some noise from the bedroom and hurried to check on her friends. All of them seemed to be sleeping. Can you guess which one wandered outside? Lily. She has leaves in her hair. The next day, Lucy, Rhonda, and Lily met in the classroom. They were very concerned. Why? This is Joy's desk, and it's empty. She didn't come to school. Neither did she warn anybody. Look, Lucy is carrying a cup of coffee with Joy's name. Joy didn't show up and didn't answer her friend's calls. Lucy, Rhonda, and Lily went to visit her. They found the girl in bed, under a blanket. The friends got very scared. Can you tell why? Joy has covered the window with a blackout curtain, and the shape of her ears and teeth has changed. She's turning into a vampire! Lily decided to stay and take care of Joy. Meanwhile, Rhonda offered Lucy to visit her Aunt Vera. She ran a magic shop with different potions. When Vera heard about what happened to Joy, she said, Okay, I need three ingredients to cook a healing drink. Here's the first one. 
When it comes to me, you go when you see red and stop at green. Can you guess the ingredient? It's watermelon. To get the second ingredient, Vera took Rhonda and Lucy to her cherry garden. Rhonda picked eight cherries, Lucy picked 13, and Vera picked 14. How many apples did they collect together? Zero. Apples don't grow in cherry gardens. Vera gave Lucy and Rhonda a hint about the third ingredient. Here it is. Can you help them crack this rebus? It's Mandragora. Mandragora grew near the spookiest house in town. Vera gave Lucy and Rhonda a task to find it and bring it to her store. While Rhonda was searching in the garden, Lucy decided to get a closer look at the house. She saw a sign with a weird name on it, Sioman Eprik. She went to the huge door and opened it quietly. After Lucy got inside, the door slammed shut behind her back. Tons of vampire bats rushed at her. Lucy started pulling on the door like crazy. Suddenly, she saw that there was something written on it. Change the order of letters in Sioman Eprik. She yelled the answer, and the door opened. What did the girl say? The real name of that place was Creepy Mansion. Rhonda found three root vegetables in the garden, but only one of them was Mandragora. Can you figure out which veggie Rhonda should pick? Even if you've never seen a mandrake, you can eliminate the other plants. This is definitely a carrot, and this is a beet. So the remaining one must be the mandragora. Lucy and Rhonda prepared to leave the spooky house, but suddenly they stepped on a trap hidden in the grass and fell into a deep well. They looked around and found three tunnels leading to freedom. A fire-breathing dragon was waiting in the first tunnel. It was very angry and disliked people. There was a portal leading into a black hole in the second tunnel, and huge cacti were growing all over the third tunnel. Their juice was poisonous to any human. Which way should Lucy and Rhonda choose? The third one. Look, those cacti don't have any spines, and no one's going to force the girls to drink cactus juice. Vera cooked the potion for Joy. Lucy and Rhonda took it to the girl's house. But when they entered her room, it was empty. Joy's parents said that Lily and Joy had left together. They were both acting very weird. Rhonda said, Oh no, they've both turned into vampires. We've got to find them before it's too late. Can you help them find any clues in Joy's room? Look at her laptop. They seem to have bought train tickets to go to Las Vegas to visit Joy's granny. Lucy and Rhonda boarded the train. Besides them, there were four other people in the car. One of these passengers didn't have a ticket. Can you figure out who it is? This woman. She's the only one who's hiding her head behind the headrest of her seat so that the camera doesn't spot her. When the train was going through a tunnel, the lights went out and the passengers got very frightened. When the light turned on again, one of the passengers shouted, Help me! Someone has stolen my bag! Lucy immediately realized who had done this. What about you? Any ideas? Yeah, this guy. There's some makeup lying under his seat, and his window is open. He put the contents of the bag into his backpack, and then threw the bag out the window. 
Rhonda and Lucy got to Las Vegas and headed for the house where Joy's granny lived. But they kept coming to the wrong houses. In the first house, they met this old lady. And in the second, there was this one. Can you tell which elderly woman is dangerous? It's the second one. She's up to something, while the first one is just getting ready for a Halloween party. Finally, Lucy and Rhonda found the right house. The door was open. When they entered, they saw Joy's granny unconscious on the floor. She had a vampire bite on her neck. Suddenly, Joy and Lily popped out of nowhere. They had pale faces, sharp teeth, and pointy ears. They came closer and closer, ready to bite their friends. Suddenly, Rhonda began laughing and exclaimed, Stop fooling around, it's just a prank! How did she know? The mirror reflects Joy, and Lily casts a shadow. They're not real vampires, it's just a Halloween prank. Joy went to take a shower to remove her vampire makeup. But someone poured paint into the shower head, and the water turned green. Joy questioned Lucy, Rhonda, and Lily. Lucy said, I did my laundry and then went to cook some kiwi jam. Sorry, I gotta go, it might burn. Lily said, I took a shower and washed my hair right before you went in. What happened? Why are you so green? And Rhonda said, I'm studying for my geometry test. Can you keep it down, please? Who pranked Joy? Lily said she'd just washed her hair, but it's dry and braided. Besides, she's wearing a dress under her bathrobe. That's a pretty suspicious outfit. Rhonda decided to prank Lily. She took a balloon and a cupcake paper cup. She filled the balloon with some water and put it into the paper cup. Then she added some shaving cream on top and decorated it all with sprinkles. Now it looked exactly like a real cupcake. Rhonda was very proud of herself. Suddenly, she heard other girls entering the kitchen. Rhonda left her cupcake on a plate, along with real cupcakes, and hid under the table. Lily, Lucy, and Joy entered the kitchen, saw the cupcakes, and decided to eat them. Can you tell who took the prank cupcake? Joy, the real cream has already melted but the shaving cream still looks perfect. Joy, Rhonda, Lily, and Lucy went out to celebrate Halloween. They knocked on the neighbor's door. Mike opened the door. The girl shouted, trick or treat. Mike said, I'm going to give you diamonds instead of sweets if you crack my riddle. You will always find me in the past. I can be created in the present, but the future can never taint me. What am I? Each of the four friends got a beautiful diamond. What did they tell Mike? The correct answer is history. The girls went to the local Halloween party. The hostess didn't want to let them in without a password, but they didn't know it. The woman liked their costumes, so she gave them a little hint. I eat clams. I live in the ocean, I move slowly, I have five arms. What am I? In no time, Joy, Rhonda, Lily, and Lucy were inside. So, what was the password? A starfish. Amy's elder sister, Vicky, gave her this shopping list and asked her to get some groceries. Amy took the list without even looking at it. But when she arrived at the supermarket, she realized that her sister had pranked her. Vicky has encoded the names of the products she needed. Can you help Amy figure out what she's supposed to buy? Here's the first product. It's blueberry. What about this one? (laughs) 
watermelon. Can you recognize this food? That's right, it's kiwi. Here's the next rebus. Can you crack this code? Grape. What about this one? Pineapple. Great job. Next riddle. Any ideas? Vicky needs some bananas. And how about this food? That's right, Amy should buy some oranges. And here's the final product. Can you figure out what it is? Lemon. Amy took everything she needed and headed to the cashier. He said, I'll give you a 90% discount if you manage to solve my riddle. Amy agreed. Here's the riddle. If you had three apples and four oranges in one hand, and four apples and three oranges in the other hand, what would you have? Can you help Amy crack this riddle to save some money? Try to think outside the box. Obviously, you must have very large hands to hold all this. Amy left the supermarket and headed home. But suddenly, she realized that she left her wallet at the checkout. She ran back to the supermarket, but the wallet was nowhere to be found. Amy questioned three people standing nearby. Bob, the cashier, said, Sorry, I didn't see your wallet. I had the other customers. One of the customers, Kim, said, I think I saw the cleaner take your wallet from the checkout after you'd left. And the cleaner, Nancy, said, Who do you think I am? I need this job to support my family. Who stole the wallet? It was Kim. She's holding her own wallet in her hand. But there's also Amy's wallet hidden in her boot. Amy didn't want to waste her time, so she told Kim, I won't call the police if you give me back my wallet and crack my riddle. Kim agreed. Here's the riddle. Can you name four days which start with the letter T? It was Kim's lucky day because she managed to solve this riddle. What was her reply? Tuesday, Thursday, today, and tomorrow. Amy, Vicky, and their boyfriends Josh and Greg went hiking and got lost. They wandered around the forest for a few hours and found this sign. There were three paths through the forest. The first one would take them to a toxic swamp. No one has ever returned from that swamp alive. Hungry tigers were blocking the second road. And to use the third path, the guys had to cross an ice-cold mountain river. Which way is the safest? The third one. See this sign? It says the river is only 20 inches deep. They can easily cross it. It got dark very fast. While the friends were still trying to find a way to cross the river, their phones had run out of battery and they only had one torch. The river is too risky to cross without any lighting. If all four people started crossing the river at the same time, the torchlight wouldn't be enough. Plus, each person would be crossing the river at a different speed. Amy would need only one minute, Vicky would do it in two minutes, Josh would need seven minutes, and Greg, ten minutes. 
What's the shortest time needed for all friends to cross the river? Usually, people jump to the conclusion that the fastest person should guide everyone. In this case, Amy would have to accompany Greg. It'd take 10 minutes. Then she would need one minute to come back. She'd guide Josh across the river. It'd take seven minutes. Then Amy would spend one minute to return for Vicky and make the final two-minute walk across the river. In this case, the entire process would take 21 minutes. But our task is to minimize the time. That's why we should find a way for the slowest people to walk together. So here's the correct order. Amy and Vicky cross the river, which takes them two minutes. Then Vicky comes back. That's another two minutes. Greg and Josh take the torch from Vicky and go across the river. It takes them 10 minutes. Then Amy comes back with the torch, takes Vicky, and they cross the river together. That's three minutes. In this case, the total time will be 17 minutes. After crossing the river, the guys meet a woodsman. He promises to guide them out of the forest hey. if they solved his riddle. What do an island and the letter T have in common? After the friends answered, the woodsman explained to them how to find the bus stop and disappeared. What did they say? The letter T and the island are both in the middle of the water. It took a while to find the bus station and the guys got hungry. That's why they decided to buy some food. But only one of these vending machines is safe to use. Can you tell which one? Someone scribbled cash eater on this vending machine, so it's probably not working. Cockroaches are crawling all over the food inside this machine. The guys should use the second vending machine. When the bus arrived, the guys realized that they didn't have enough cash to buy the tickets. But the driver was very generous. He said, I'm going to give you a free ride if you crack my riddle. It's very simple. Why is six afraid of seven? Amy solved this riddle right away. What about you? Because when it was hungry, seven ate nine. The guys took their seats on the bus. Can you find anything weird here? This elderly lady is transparent. She's a ghost. When Amy and Vicky returned home, they discovered that someone had robbed their house. The girls called the police. Detectives questioned three neighbors. Mary said, Last week, my husband Rick and I were sunbathing in the Maldives. Rick got sunburned and we had to go back home earlier. We've just come from the airport. Love said, I think I saw a suspicious guy in a hoodie near your house a few hours ago. Joanna said, My boyfriend and I celebrated our anniversary in a restaurant. We've just returned home. Who's lying? Mary. She said that Rick had gotten sunburned, but now he looks perfectly fine, and he doesn't look tanned either. Amy decided to get a new job to save some money for college. She sent her resume to the local bank and received an invitation for a job interview. The HR manager offered her a riddle to challenge her logical thinking. Imagine you have an unlimited number of coins in your wallet. What's the minimum number of coins you'll need? to make sure that each of these coins will touch exactly three others. Can you help Amy get the job? The correct answer is four. She should place three coins flat on the table so that they form a triangle and their edges touch each other. And then she can put the fourth coin in the middle on top of the rest. Amy got the job in the bank. After her first day at work was over, she went home. But on her way home, she realized she'd forgotten her phone in the bank. So she went back and took her phone. Suddenly, the girl heard some weird noise coming from the bank vault. 
She went there and saw these three men inside the room. She noticed that one of them was an imposter right away. What about you? Can you spot him? The third guy doesn't belong here. Look, he's wearing a police badge. He must be working undercover. The robbers ran away and locked Amy and the police officers inside the vault. Now they have to solve this riddle to unlock the door. They have to find a way to connect these nine stars by using just four lines, all without lifting their hand even once. Can you help them find the right way? Such a task requires creativity, and this shape meets all requirements. But maybe you came up with something better. Amy bought flowers for her sister's birthday. She was walking down the street, holding the bouquet in her hands. Suddenly, a man in a mask ran up to her, grabbed the flowers, and ran to the nearest restaurant. Amy started crying. A patrol car stopped next to her. Amy told the police officer what had happened. They went to the restaurant together to find the criminal. There were four men with very similar bouquets. Can you tell who robbed Amy? This guy. Amy's bouquet was tied with purple ribbon. Vicky organized a birthday party. To avoid uninvited guests, she asked the security guard to set a special password. But her boyfriend, Harry, who was most definitely not invited, developed a plan that could help him enter the party. He hid near the door and started to listen attentively. When the first guest arrived, the guard said, 12. The guest answered with, 6. Then the second guest arrived, and the guard said, 6. The guest replied with, 3. Harry thought he'd heard enough and walked up to the guard. The man said, 8, and Harry replied with, 4. After hearing this answer, the guard asked Harry to leave. Why? Because the password is not half the number, it's the number of letters in the word. He should have said 5 because the word 8 consists of 5 letters. Can you count the number of squares in this image? The correct answer is 40. Which one of these students has three mothers? It must be this guy right here, the one with the three sandwiches. The guy with three glasses got them from the cafeteria. He must be very thirsty, but it's not a sign of three mothers. But this one definitely brought sandwiches from home, so I bet it's him. Let me know if you disagree. Let's move on. One of the girls has a pet at home. Can you guess which one? It's the girl in the middle. Look, her hands and arms are scratched. She must be living with a cat. Okay, look at these three people. Who is a vampire? It's this guy. See, he doesn't cast a shadow. Something's wrong. Chastity was at a party and met three guys. All of them claimed to be pilots, but one of them lied. Can you guess who's not a pilot? Pilots must have perfect eyesight. This guy is wearing glasses, so he's not a real pilot. Look at these three students. One of them is left-handed. Can you figure out who exactly? It must be this girl. 
The outer side of her left hand has some ink stains. It happens when she writes. Since we write from left to right, her arm covers everything she's just written. Three best friends met for a coffee in the evening. Can you tell which one of them has a pet? Look at this girl's bag. There's dog food in there, so she probably has a dog at home waiting for her. This one is super easy. Three sisters came to visit their parents. One of them got engaged while she was away. Can you tell which one? It's this girl who's wearing a ring. Three men came to a job interview. The company didn't want to hire fathers because they needed full commitment for the first year. All men said they were single and had no families, but one of them lied and actually had a daughter. Which one? It's this guy here. Why would he wear a pink scrunchie on his wrist if he wasn't making his daughter's hair right before the interview? Okay, now let's go and look at people's houses. Here are the bathrooms of Daryl and Tiberius. Which one of them has a girlfriend? It must be Tiberius. Look, there are two toothbrushes in his bathroom. Nevea and Nicoline are students. Both of them live in a one-room apartment with their friends to split the rent. Their mothers once came to visit. Take a look at Nevea and Nicoline's bedrooms. Can you tell which one of them is dating her roommate? It must be Nevea. In Nicoline's bedroom, there are two single beds. And in Nevea's bedroom, there's just one big bed. Look at these three friends. One of them isn't really a human, but which one? Look, this guy right here has only four fingers. Perfect, we trained you well. Now let's solve some cases. The city bank was robbed and Detective Callum was on the case. After a long investigation, the police managed to track the robber and found the money hidden in the nearest desert in a cactus bush. They couldn't see the robber's face, but there were three suspects. Take a look at the people. Who is guilty? It's this man. Look, he has many scars on his arms and hands. He must have gotten them when he was digging the money in the cactus bush. A group of friends asked Billiam if he wanted to join them on a hike that weekend. He said that he couldn't because he had broken his arm. The next day in school, Billiam indeed appeared with a broken arm. So he stayed at home and his friends went hiking. On Monday, the friends met in school again. Billiam said that he had just stayed home watching TV. His friends told him about the hike and asked why he had lied about the broken arm. Why did they decide that his arm wasn't really broken? Last week, Billiam's right arm was broken. On Monday, it was the left one. He must be faking it. Mr. Tucker called the police and reported that he had been robbed. Detective Callum arrived at his place and found Mr. Tucker tied up to a chair. Mr. Tucker said that he had been sleeping when someone wearing a mask had broken into the room. They took him right out of the bed, tied him up to the chair, and then took all the savings he was keeping in the wardrobe. When they left, he managed to call the police because his cell phone was in his pocket. Still, Detective Callum didn't believe him. Why? Mr. Tucker said that he had been taken right out of bed but the bed was perfectly made. I doubt that a robber would care enough to make Mr. Tucker's bed on their way out. Detective Callum was spending the winter holidays at a ski resort with his friends. In the morning, they were going to go skiing on the fresh snow that had fallen at night when a local police officer called him and asked him to come to a hotel nearby to solve a case. So, Detective Callum had to go. Someone robbed the cashier's desk and there were three suspects. Questley said that she was in her room all night sleeping. Egbert said that he was out partying in a different hotel and had just come back around an hour ago. Fenton said that he had been binge-watching a show all night but hadn't stolen anything. Who is guilty?
It was Egbert. If he had just returned, he would have left his footprints on the fresh snow, but there were no footprints leading to the hotel as Detective Callum was walking there. And the name Egbert will make anyone suspicious. There was a car accident in the suburbs, and police arrived to investigate the case. The driver went into a cliff right where the road was taking a dangerous turn. The car turned around, and he was pushed out of it and got stuck nearby. He had his cell phone on him, so he was able to make a call. A police officer helped the driver out and asked him to show what was in the trunk. The driver gladly opened it with his keys. In the trunk, there was his suitcase, some instruments, and a spare tire. The police officer said that the accident had been staged. Why? The driver took the keys out of his pocket. If it had been a real accident, the keys would have remained in the car. Mr. Grayson called the police and said that she had been robbed. Detective Callum arrived for the investigation. Here's what she said. It was almost midnight. I was in my room upstairs painting. Suddenly, the power went out. There was no light or electricity, and I could only see the streetlights outside. Then, the stationary phone rang. I was scared, so I didn't pick it up. I stayed upstairs, and in about 10 minutes, the light came back. I just went to sleep, and now, in the morning, I found out that someone stole my grandma's diamond ring. Detective Callum didn't believe her. Why? If the lights and the electricity were out, how would a stationary telephone ring? This lady is making things up. Gavin drove to get some groceries and parked his car in front of the store. Of course, he forgot where he had parked and couldn't find his car. Luckily, he had taken a picture of his parked car and he opened it to look up the number of the parking lot. The problem is that his parking lot number is covered and the number of the lots nearby doesn't make any sense. Can you figure out what's Gavin's parking lot number and where he should search for his car? The numbers are just turned upside down in the photo. The numbers are 86 through 91, and his car is parked in 87. Now I have a short logo quiz for you. I'll show you a logo, and you have to tell the company. Here's the first one. Do you recognize it? It's Honda, a Japanese car brand. This one is super easy. What is it? This is Pepsi, of course. What about this cute crocodile? Does it ring a bell? This is Lacoste, a French clothing brand. Another easy one. I bet you have it on your phone. Yes, of course. That's Spotify. What about this one? Yes, it's Nike. This one is a very fancy brand. What's your guess? That's Louis Vuitton. Okay, another one for you. It's harder, but you've got this. What's your call? This is Reebok, an American footwear company. Do you recognize this bull? Is a Lamborghini logo. This is a painfully familiar yellow rectangle. Where is it from? That's the National Geographic logo. Porsche and Vinette live in a country where postal services are super unreliable. Everything sent by post is stolen from the package. How can Portia send his wife, Vinette, a diamond ring if both of them can buy locks, but don't have keys from each other's locks? Portia can lock the box with the ring and send it to Vinette. When she receives the box, she should lock the box with her lock and send it back to him. When he receives it, 
he can open his lock and remove it, and send the box back to Vinette with her lock only, so that she can open it once she gets it again. There is a box filled with balls of different colors. Five red ones, eight blue ones, and eleven purple ones. Ninja has to pick out balls blindfolded until he's sure that he has at least two balls of the same color. What's the minimum number of balls Ninja should take out to be sure of that? Worst case scenario, he'll be picking out the balls of a different color every time. There are three colors, so if he picks out three, they might all be different. But if he picks out four, then the additional one for sure will match one of the existing colors. So, Ninja should pick four 